Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 9th of May, 2023. Coming up with this episode of the, of the Crusty Canuck Podcast, episode 206. Alberta UCP versus the NDP and liberals fear. Yes, in recent news, liberals are fearing repercussions from the People's Republic of China and more drama between our provincial leaders. All that and more come to the podcast. Please stick around. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. I smoke cigarettes and I drop some swear words. See you in a bit. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally welcome. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 206, UCP versus the NDP and liberals fearing repercussions from the People's Republic of China. Yes, it's on everyone's mind this week. And this podcast is also brought to you in part by Battlefit Bodywear. That's right, Battlefit Bodywear. Be Battlefit. Be Limitless. Be Battlefit. Battlefit Bodywear. Links to me in the description. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful 9th of May, 2023. And I just want to say thank you out there, uh, before I begin, to the fine people at Northern Perspective, that YouTube channel. Uh, you saw my live stream, if so, the other day, uh, minus the te technical difficulties that I was having with the microphone, what have you. Uh, we had a great talk, about two hours worth anyway, of just politics and life in this country and what it means to be Canadian. So give yourselves a round of applause out there, ladies and gentlemen, for sticking around like you did. I am very, very grateful, and thank you very much to Cypher and Fox, who put up a great show, uh, regardless of the avatar use or not. Uh, they did protect their identities for very good reasons. But they also make valid points in regards to what has to be done in this country. So one more time, big round of applause for everyone who came out to the show and said hello, send their comments and queries, and thank you once again to the fine people at Northern Perspective. That's right. You guys are awesome. I look forward to working with you guys again in the future. But just like the title card says, ladies and gentlemen, UCP versus the NDP and the Liberals' fear of the PRC. Yes, that's right. In recent news, especially here in Alberta, uh, Daniel Smith has been in some hot water in regards to comments she made about 18 months ago uh, in regards to people that got vaccinated. Like I've said numerous times, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who is vaccinated or who isn't vaccinated. Uh, what annoyed me the most was the simple fact that one minute the government's saying you don't have to, and the next minute saying, you are, you do, you must. And employers and corporations alike got together and colluded into telling people what to do with their bodies yet again. Now, regardless of what she said in comparing people to Nazis or comparing people to this or not, I think she has what it takes to lead this province for a very, very good reason. <coughs> Excuse me. Probably because she's a no-nonsense kind of lady and she made some mistakes in the past. And guess what? She's owned them. And she's probably the first politician and especially the first female politician that stood on a podium with a microphone with mainstream media, independent media alike, saying, hey, I fucked up. I own it. That deserves a good round of applause. Don't you think? Right? Now, I remember her making those comments and I just kind of dismissed them like, yeah, whatever, because I was thinking about myself, my wife, my family, my friends who were really, really under a lot of scrutiny, especially some of my friends and myself who were under a lot of scrutiny for not getting the job. Oh, my God, you know? What's going to happen if you don't get injected? And it was proven, regardless if you got one, two, or three, or four, like our dear leader, you're still going to get sick. So it doesn't really matter anymore. But now, because it, we're in election time here in Alberta, we got between now and the 29th of May for people to decide who want, want to be premier again. I would think Daniel Smith should is a shoe in for it. I'm not going to wager any money on it, but uh, she's a hell of a lot better than Motley Notley. I'll tell you that right now, because uh, Miss Notley is basically socialist based and she loves using other people's money, right? Well, because of her, when she was premier, about 180,000 jobs left the province. Right. She was on the bus, off the bus again in regards to pipelines. Her idea of a great pipeline was put everything on trains and rail. 
right? dead against coal. But then again, she's a firm believer in generating electricity, and yet there's no nuclear power plants here in Alberta yet, per se. So which is it? She can't shit or get off the pot. But her social programs are bar none. And hey, don't get me wrong. I love the idea of social programs to help people out when they need them. By all means, it doesn't matter if you're a senior, doesn't matter if you're a veteran, doesn't matter if you're First Nations, doesn't matter if you're a battered wife or a battered husband. And they do exist, ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, they do. It's not a myth. I know a couple. So keep that in mind. So social programs are good as long as there's money out there to support them. How do you get money? You let the private sector thrive to employ people. Okay? And you come up with a simple tax rate that can handle these costs and these measures. So it doesn't matter if you're a municipal employee or a provincial employee or a federal employee. When they suggest that you can get a raise and you say yay to a raise, how about you say no to a raise and do what you can? Now, I'm not saying based on the economic turmoil that we're facing right now because of our dear leaders in Ottawa and their federal budgets of bullshit. I am saying when it comes to getting paid, do the job you're getting paid to do. If you're making 75,000 plus a year, put in that 75,000 plus a year effort. Okay. I sure as hell do for my paycheck. And I'm just starting to get ahead now because of the inflammatory bullshit and the inflationary actions of our dear leaders. Anyway, I'm going to play a little video for you from Rachel Notley here. I want to thank uh, Sheldon, uh, Yakachuk, if I'm saying that right, uh, from Twitter. And this is a video that Miss Notley put together in regards to vaccination status. Okay. So I want you, my wonderful audience, to really, really listen to it. It's a few minutes long, but listen to what she says about greater good, knocking on your door, that kind of thing, and see where she is coming from in her perspective. Okay. Think about that for a second and think about exactly what and where she stands on things okay it's just it just seems really really uh how do you say shady at its finest i don't trust her and uh i'm just going to recommend ladies and gentlemen neither should you so please listen vaccinated our caucus is proposing basically three actions first the government should continue to closely examine the ahs data on who it is that isn't getting vaccinated and where they live and this should be done alongside detailed polling, detailed focus group work to understand exactly why the folks in that group of unvaccinated folks still haven't gotten their shots yet. Our second call is for a grant program for community groups who can partner with AHS and bring a trusted local voice into these conversations. Mary Chu and others have had incredibly great success with this model here in Northeast Calgary. Now, last year, the government spent $14.8 million on vaccine promotion and communications. But so far this year, they appear to have only spent about $5.5 million. What we're proposing is that that budget essentially be tripled to approximately $45 million. And this will help fund our third and perhaps most critical call. And that's for the government to use the research and the community partnerships to overcome barriers on a case-by-case -case basis and then literally commence going door-to-door, -door, having conversations and offering Alberta vaccines right there on people's doorsteps. There's something to be said for finding out What's on the minds of that last 28% uh, of eligible Albertans who are not getting a vaccine? Because I absolutely believe that not it's uniform? not uniform. Hmm. And the, the iconic uh, uh, picture that we have of someone who hasn't gotten their vaccine being someone that you know is more likely to be in the media right now, I don't think is an accurate reflection of the majority of folks who have not yet gotten their vaccine. And so it's incumbent on us to be highly sophisticated in how we uh, figure out what's driving the decisions of that group of people and then how best to meet them where they are um, to, to talk them into to making that choice. The fact is, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this work will be difficult, it will be inefficient, and it will cost money. But the price of not doing this work, both in money as well as in human suffering, 
is far higher. More Albertans vaccinated. Okay, so the cost is higher, and here's this little premier who wants to go door to door and ask, why didn't you get your needle, Yavol? Why didn't you? Is there a reason why you didn't do it? Well, we're going to have something on the spot for you. Officer, grab this person. <coughs> What's that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? And this is someone who was the premier for about four years who put the province in debt because of her fantastic spending ideas, saving the world. Oh, oh wow. Now, these are people that in Edmonton think is, is doing a wonderful job, right? Well, just like I keep saying, ladies and gentlemen, crack don't smoke itself. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at krustycanuck.ca. Honestly, like, what, what would you think about that? Please, you can find me at crustybconnect67 at gmail.com. Send me an email if you like and, and uh, like and hear and enjoy what I do on this podcast. Please uh, click like, subscribe, share your content, share this content or your content, whatever. I don't mind. <laughs> share it all over your social media platforms to help us Canadians get our algorithm out there to the masses and not just in Canada, but North America, Europe, everywhere else that you can imagine too. Uh, C11 has been passed as law. So that's in the works. So the more Canadians help other Canadians, the easier it's going to be for all of us to get all of our content out there, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter if it's interpretive dance, painting, acting, music, uh, art. It doesn't matter if you're putting sculptures together or commentary, like the fine people at Northern Perspective, my podcast, the Cresting Up podcast, and other independent media outlets there too. Greg Wycliffe, a comedian, commentator. Ben Bankus, comedian, commentator. Rebel News, True North. Daniel Boardman. Black Sheep Truth Media, uh, who else? Uh, the Truth by Dan Dix, just to name a few. So there's lots of options out there for you, my wonderful audience, to pick and choose from and decide for yourselves. And that's what we must do. Okay? Keep deciding for ourselves what is right. Who gives a shit if they say disinformation or misinformation? How dare you? You're misinformed. I like to think that us podcasters here are probably a hell of a lot more informed on things than the mainstream legacy yahoos who keep talking about uh, Russian interference, who keep talking about white supremacy and all these other deflection words. Okay? It's BS. And we come up with another video from Lauren Gunter from the Toronto Sun in regards to uh, the Chinese stuff that's been plaguing our parliament uh, in the past couple of weeks. In fact, they've been plaguing our parliament since the better part of 2021 when MP Michael Chong's family has been harassed by none other than Chinese ambassadors, diplomats that are posted here in Canada who are overseeing what people are saying and doing. Puts in perspective. Anyway, here's a message from my sponsor, the fine people at Battlefit Bodywear. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Krusty Canuck here. Just to remind you, my wonderful audience out there, that Battlefit Bodywear was founded in Windsor, Essex, Ontario in 2019 and is a proud Canadian company. All of our apparel and accessories are purchased and printed right in our hometown by local independent business owners. We pride ourselves on quality and customer satisfaction. At Battlefit Bodywear, we believe that every person has a warrior with them waiting to come out. Our brand is meant to inspire and and fan the internal flame. Regardless of what your thing is, take it to the next level and be the best version of yourself that you can be. We also believe in that maintaining balanced lifestyle is a key to a good life and includes having a regimented and productive fitness and exercise schedule. Motivation comes and goes, but discipline will get you across the finish line. Get there with Battle Fit Body Wear. Trusty Canuck says so. Cheers. And just a reminder too, ladies and gentlemen, Battle Fit Body Wear. That's right. Be Battle Fit, be Battle Ready. Be Limitless, be Battle Fit, Battle Fit Body Wear. Links will be in the description. And we're carrying on again today with episode 206, UCP versus NDP and the Liberals' fear. Yes, uh, Daniel Smith, I think she's more unqualified to lead this province to victory, to success. We all know that not every politician is a god or goddess in their own right. But I think she's got her shit together, regardless of what's happened in the past or what might happen in the future. Because I think she has a very, very well, well-informed grip on what can happen based on repercussions. Now, I know she's putting together good programs to help those uh, individuals 
uh, west of the province are having issues with the wildfires. And I like to say out there to all the people that keep saying it's climate change, it's climate change, it's climate change. Okay, bear with me. Okay, bear with me here. To all you climate change advocates who are scared and sitting on your hands and clenching your other, your boyfriend's pearls, wait for it. <laughs> Fuck off. I am sick and tired of people trying to instill more fear in our lives. Is the weather changing? Yeah, possibly. Is the climate changing? Is the sky falling? No, it's not. It's also been a very, very dry spring, and there's been speculation and investigation into these fires on how they were set to. And there's also a story from Rebel Media that come up with the fact that there are certain individuals, certain firefighting units who have hired based on diversity and equity rather than actual qualifications. So there's something there in the mix, too. Now, I'm not saying people of this or people of that have done something. But I'm also saying the hiring practices need some work and qualified people need to be in certain key jobs to get things done. I'll leave a link to that article uh, there in the description for you guys to follow, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, carrying on again with the whole uh, NDP versus UCP, whatever. I think Miss Daniel Smith has got what it takes. And I'm not going to sit and brag about who I'm going to vote for or what have you. But I think she has what it takes. And there isn't any liberals running. Okay, there's some independents and there's a lot of people out there that love this province and love this country and want to see this province, especially this province, prosper and flourish and thrive. And that includes all peoples, ladies and gentlemen, all peoples. And I'm talking to you, my First Nation friends. You're part of this, too. Regardless of how much you may hate this or hate that or not, when I look at you, yeah, I look at a First Nations, but I also look at a fellow Canadian, a fellow Canuck, and we can fucking do this together and overcome and triumphant in this democracy as Canadians. That's just my say. Anyway, carrying on again with episode 206, UCP versus the NDP and the Liberals fear. Yes, it's been in the news that Mr. Uh, MP Michael Chong was harassed in 2021 uh, by some Chinese officials. And there's there was also speculation about a year and a half ago about certain police stations being set up in Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, and other major cities across the country, I wonder if there's anything in Edmonton and Calgary or, of all places, Lethbridge. Now, I visit all those cities, and they're great places to be, to hang out. Good food, good family, good friends, what have you, art, music, sports, you name it. Every one of the cities provides something. But I wonder if there's any kind of police stations there, eh? Hmm. Uh, uh, interesting. We'll have to wait and see. But needless to say, I'm digressing here. Uh, the liberals are up in arms because Miss Jolie was put on the spot by Michael Chong. And her biggest concern, ladies and gentlemen, was the fact that, oh, I don't want repercussions from China. Oh, we don't want repercussions. Oh, my God. And yet when they voted in the House to do something about this, every liberal MP said no. I wonder why. Why did every liberal MP say no to it? Right. Probably because our dear leader, Justin Sock Puppet, Potato, potato, right, has investments with China because he did say back in 2012 or 2013, while he was leading the Liberal Party to, against, to go against this big bad Mr. Harper, you know, with economic policies, oh, heaven forbid, he was sitting there bragging to a bunch of women how he admired China's basic dictatorship, how they can turn their economy around on a dime and promote and go green as quick as possible. Well, I hate to break it to you there, Buckeye, but China hasn't gone green in a very, very long time. They might have gone green in the name of sickness because of some of the poisoning and some of the pollution they promoted and the amount of people that were killed in the late 50s and early 60s in the name of Mao's cultural revolution. But I won't go there because I might upset some commies and might get their panties in a bunch and go get a double, triple latte just to feel better. Right? Anyhow. <laughs> I need medication. But you, you see my point, ladies and gentlemen. It has nothing to do with admiring China's dictatorship. It's a matter of that Papa Trudeau, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, had a soft spot for Mao Zedong. Okay. He also had a soft spot for Fidel Castro and the revolution, eh? Right? So he had a soft spot for commies. Now, I believe in trade and commerce with whatever nation you want. I don't care how they run their politics, how they how they do things. Okay. But if you're gonna trade in commerce with a communist country, you should have trade and commerce with your own country too. That means produce our oil, our oil, 
produce our minerals, natural resources, and bring it to market. So you bring money in. But because of inflation and because of the debts and because of all the virtue spending and the virtue signaling and the name of equality and fairness and inclusion, you forgot one thing, Liberal Party. You forgot to include Canadians in that deal, too. Just like you forget to include Canadians when it comes to these decisions and just like how you forget Canadians when it comes to actual fucking security. So Miss Joe Lee, Miss Mark Mendocino, Mr. Bill Blair, Mr. Trudeau and Miss Freeland. Well, like I say again, stop kissing your cousins. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Anyway, carry on again with episode 206. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the UCP versus the NDP. And liberals fearing the People's Republic of China. Now, this... These issues should have been sorted out a long, long time ago in regards to interference. And when it comes to making these lists of internal agents or international agents working in Canada, no matter what embassy they are, it should have been sorted out, just like our friends in Australia and just like our friends in the United States have done. Okay. But like I say, Justin likes his basic dictatorship because it's so cool. Oh, oh my goodness. I just love this dictatorship. Yeah, of course he does. Because what kind of kickback does he get out of it, right? The Trudeau Foundation was proven that they received money from China. And it doesn't matter if Justin's brother Alex uh, said, don't be silly, don't be stupid. We know the truth. It's been done. Anyway, here's a uh, video from Lord Gunter, uh, Lauren Gunter, my, my, my apologies, who is talking about the whole issue in regards to uh, the public inquiry and what we need for it when it comes to understanding what has happened here in this country and uh, what needs to be done. Really what needs to be done, you know? So yeah, the liberals finally said, okay, yeah, we'll get rid of, of this diplomat and we will send him on his merry way. But you fail to realize too, well, not you, my audience. I mean, the mainstream media fails to realize how much they have stalled. To get it done. Anyway, I'll let you all decide here too. I'll just queue up the video. And uh, we'll see for ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because it's just ridiculous how some of these individuals have gotten away with it. Well, really, you know, wh what have they done? What have these people done in the name of this democracy? And when you hear Justin Trudeau talk and Seamus O'Regan talk and Melanie Jolie talk, and of course, Miss Krista Freeland, who's got her head tilted like she's watching television as a puppy, right? Talk about press freedom. But they only promote press freedom when it's in their favor, not in the favor of the viewer or the reader, or the consumer, but in the political party's favor, right? See, it, it sounds kind of communist, doesn't it? Communism, fascism, even though, you know, they're both relatively based in socialism. It's a shit show, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I'll cue up the, uh, uh, the card here for you. And we'll get this sorted out for you. Okay. So like I say, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this content all over your social media platform. Don't be shy. If you have a question for me, please email me or comment in this video once you see it. And once again, thank you out there to uh, the people at Northern Perspective, uh, the fine gentleman, Cypher, and his lovely wife, Miss Fox. So one time, I'll give you another, nah, I'll give you another round of applause for that. You guys are awesome. And uh, the viewership for that show was exceptional too. So you guys give yourselves I'll be good pat in the back for coming out for that too. Anyway, here's uh, Lauren Gunter and his spiel on uh, the interference here. So sort it out for you momentarily. Yeah. And you guys decide. I want you, my audience, I want you guys to decide. Uh, yeah, time for a public inquiry from Lord Gunter there. Why hasn't Prime Minister Justin Trudeau already called a public inquiry into alleged interference by China in our democracy? If you're keeping count on this issue, um, David Johnson, who was appointed by Trudeau as his independent special rapporteur, which means an advisor, um, to advise him on whether a public inquiry was necessary. And the deadline for that is May 23rd after Trudeau appointed Johnson in March, on March 15th. But the problem here is that the whole process is absurd. When it comes to national security, 
the buck stops with the prime minister. It doesn't stop with David Johnson. David Johnson is a highly respected former governor general who was appointed by Stephen Harper. But he's also a lifelong friend of the Trudeau family. And until recently, he was a member of the Pierre Trudeau Foundation, which is involved in its own controversy for accepting a controversial donation from a Chinese billionaire. Now, all this started months ago, primarily set off by reporting by the Globe and Mail and Global News that China had attempted to interfere in the last two federal elections. Uh, Minister, when did you first find out that a PRC diplomat was targeting me and my family? Uh, I've learned it through the news. And that the primary thing they were doing was um, launching campaigns against conservative MPs, not exclusively, but mostly against conservative MPs and candidates who were judged to be hostile to China. But it's since exploded far beyond that. Now there are allegations that the government of China is interfering in all levels of government in Canada, and not just during elections. Not just the federal government, but provincial governments, municipal governments, indigenous governments, and not just with opposition politicians, but with politicians of all stripes. In other words, this is a, this is a major tactical campaign that's been going on for a long time. Now, Trudeau was warned about all of this by a parliamentary committee that he appointed in 2017, and that in 2019, four years ago, told him that all of this was going on, that the, the federal government wasn't doing a good job, uh, that the current government and past governments weren't doing a good job of dealing with it and had recommendations for how to go about combating this stuff. So what did Trudeau do with this report from his own committee that had politicians of all levels uh, of, of parties on it? He ignored it. He just, he just he accepted the recommendations and, and nothing happened. Okay. So the latest controversy is that conservative MP Michael Chong was targeted by a Chinese diplomat in Toronto with a campaign that would include threats to him and his extended family in Hong Kong. The reason being that in 2021, he had denounced um, China's genocide of its Uyghur uh, minority Muslim population. And apparently the Chinese government didn't like that, so they were going to target him. I can't think of an interest more important to the Canadian state than the protection and the safety and the security of its own citizens and I agree with here you. on Canadian soil. And that I agree trumps with you. all other interests. Now, the government has now expelled that diplomat, but Michael Chong himself has said what happened to him happens all the time to Canadians of Chinese origin in Canada when they denounce justifiably human rights violations in China, that they are then targeted in Canada by agents of the uh, Chinese government through campaigns that can involve, you know, everything from threats to harassment um, uh, to intimidation. So the concern then, be, oh, and by the way, the parliamentary committee that they also, it also advised Trudeau about this and recommended taking action. And he just ignored that. So look, enough is enough. Um, it's time for the Trudeau government to stop investigating itself on the issue of foreign interference. It's time for a public inquiry headed by someone appointed not just by the prime minister, but with the consent of the major opposition parties. And the reason for that is that such an inquiry may well be critical of the Trudeau government. And let's in all this not forget the point of a public inquiry. It's to develop, it's to understand what's happened and to find ways of preventing it from happening in the future, which means preventing Canadians having their rights uh, abridged by foreign interference in our democracy, which is a very important issue. Uh, I'm Laurie Goldstein of Sun Media. Uh, we're always interested in hearing your views, and please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our YouTube channel. And that's right. That was Laurie Goldstein from The Sun. Pardon me. I call him Lauren Gunter. There was a different writer altogether. But needless to say, you can see what I'm talking about here when it comes to the slack and idle and lackadaisical approach to these things. You heard Melanie Jolie talk about, oh, my God, I agree with you. I agree with you. And yet, what did she do? Sweet fuck all. She did sweet fuck all about it. She did nothing about it. Nothing. Right?
because she was appointed that position. I don't even think she was actually elected in the last federal election. I think she got a few votes, but she was handpicked by Justin for some reasons. Can you say sore knees? Oh, my goodness. Can you say, oh, my God, my teeth hurt? No, I think it's more like sore knees. Huh? And I also think it's more like, you know, she kind of earned her way to the top. You know what I mean? Know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, not that honking on Bobo BS. Right? The thing is, is that we have politicians in this country who have intentionally screwed us. Okay. Here's some uh, some tidbits that I personally think we should do. We ha we're all guilty of treating these politicians like they're gods. They're not gods. They're men and women just like you and I. And a lot of them come from very, very privileged backgrounds, meaning that they've never had to vey or hunt or whine for anything. Now, there are a lot of blue-collar politicians in the works, and there's some hidden between the seats in Parliament as we speak. But we're not seeing enough blue-collar chutzpah, enough blue-collar balls, enough blue-collar, yes, we can do this, okay? And when you watch some of Paul Yev's, uh banters back and forth and some of the conservative members who were told, oh, re re redact that comment, and they're saying, no, we're seeing it, which is good. Now, as much as I disagree with some of the conservative policies out there, it's good to see that the opposition is getting off their ass and doing something. And saying, no, no more of your crap. We're not going to take it. You guys are a bunch of liars. And rightfully so. Okay. But from my perspective and from my experience, it was brief as a candidate running for parliament. We need more common sense. Get rid of the identity politics. Get rid of the, the, the racial gendered quotas. Get rid of it. Hire the best people for the job. You elevate women because they have what it takes. Not because you want them to be. They have to decide, just like any man has to. And it doesn't matter what color, creed, sexual orientation men and women are. You hire somebody and you give someone the opportunity because they have what it takes. Not because you want them to take something or you want them to be something. You want them to show up and work on time, do the job and do the best of their ability and go above and beyond. But you as a leader and as an employer have to inspire that kind of behavior doesn't just happen when you snap your fucking fingers. you got to prove that you're worthy of that position, just like they have to prove they're worthy enough to work for you. That simple. Anyway, this brings me to the part of the episode, and I've, by uh, popular demand, I've had a few fans write in and ask me <laughs> to keep bringing this up. But uh, this is the part of the episode where I bring in uh, everyone's famous or everyone's favorite little segment. The Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And this uh, segment of the Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. You know, we have one individual. Now, I was going to have two individuals before. Uh, I handpicked uh, Miss Melanie Jolie for incompetence and her stern talking to. But I weighed the odds and I'd say, what would, who would be a better recipient of the Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit? So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, this episode's winner of... The Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit is none other than, wait for it, Marco Mendocino, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, Marco Mendocino. Oh, well done to you, sir. Yes, yes. Marco Mendocino, Canada's public safety minister, wins himself the Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. So, Mr. Mendocino, how does it feel? How does it really feel? to get yourself uh, uh, this prestigious award from the Crusty Out Podcast. I'm so happy I could just shit. Oh, well, well done then, sir. Well, we have creams and uh, papers for that kind of problem. Is there anything else you'd like to, uh, to add uh, on behalf of uh, the Canadian taxpayer that made sure you won this prestigious award? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I have an infection in my ear. Oh, <laughs> Well, again, sir, we do have uh, creams and ointments and certain papers and Q-tips for that kind of uh, kind of uh, issue there. Uh, but once again, please, please tell us how you really feel about winning the uh, Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit Award. I'm so happy I could just shit. Oh, I bet you could. Well, enough of that crap. Anyway, this has been another segment of Canada's Favorite. The Canadian Polar Vortex of Bullshit. That's right. That's right. And once again, congratulations to all our winners over the years. 
And uh, congratulations to Mr. Mendocino, you crazy, crazy individual, you silly human being. Uh, we'll be right back after this short little message, ladies and gentlemen. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And welcome to the final segment, ladies and gentlemen, of episode 206 of the Krusty Canuck podcast. Alberta's UCP versus the NDP and the Liberals fear. People's Republic of China's repercussions. I'm your host, Chris Kinock. And one more time, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. And I would beg you, ladies and gentlemen, please share this stuff all around your social media platforms. You can find this podcast on Rumble. You can find parts of it on Twitter. You can also find parts of it on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you see it, share it. You can see the little red line at the bottom there, too. You can find the podcast on Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Radio UK, and Player FM. So my Spotify fans... Spotify fans out there, please share uh, this all around. I don't use Apple Tunes. Uh, I don't know. I just, all these different technical jargons you got to put in here, put in there. Anyway, this Rumble podcast is I predominantly put on YouTube because uh, they accept the videos. And so does Rumble too. And Rumble does not, you know, use that big C word when it comes to putting content up there. So please click like, subscribe, share this stuff all over your social media platform. And once again, I want to thank the fine people at Northern Perspective for sharing my platform, sharing their input, and also mentioning my podcast on their stream too. So once again, thank you. You guys are awesome. I want to thank my audience too, and my new audience out there. Thanks for coming out and giving me a chance because I would like to make this a full-time commitment, but I cannot do it without your support, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm going to make this podcast a go, I need you, my wonderful audience, to tell two friends and two friends and so on and so on. Please give me a hand. I'm not going to sit and beg for coin. I know I just said please, but if you'd like to donate to the Krusty Hunt Podcast, there'll be links uh, where you can donate $2, $1, $5, whatever you like to donate to this podcast. Every little bit helps, ladies and gentlemen. I know uh, purses and wallets are tight for some people out there. You don't have to give if you don't want to give, but if you want to give, feel free to. And I greatly appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone who has helped me out so far along this journey. Uh, there's a few people that asked me not to mention who they were. I respect that. There's a couple who have come out in my Buy Me a Coffee app, some of my PayPal, and people who have just donated to me. And I'm very, very grateful. But uh, my ideal goal for this podcast, uh, based on my YouTube subscriptions, it says I have 11,000. Now, I'm not sure if they're all legitimate or real, but I do get enough people to come out and say, hey, how you doing? Like your show, blah, 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 blah. Uh, all the real people out there. <laughs> if you want to give me money every month, that would be great. Ideally, I would like to say, if I had a dollar from half of my subscribers, I would be on my way to making some great content and making this a real good go for you, for myself, and everybody who loves watching this podcast. So consider that, ladies and gentlemen. Anyhow, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 9th of May, 2023. Um, I want to say thank you again to everyone who's come out and said hello. Uh, once again, to Northern Perspective, a great couple, and I look forward to working with them and maybe alongside with them in, in a live parameter again we'll have to see but anyway thank you once again and to all the people who come out and said hello on our live stream regards to the technical difficulties that i had but one thing i'm going to say to everybody there keep doing what you do keep being you i don't care how you identify i don't care how you live your life do it well do the best of your ability just don't hit people take their stuff now the fiasco is going with the gun stuff in this country uh Thank the likes of Daniel Smith and the likes of uh, Scott Moe in Saskatchewan, uh, basically telling the federal government to pfft, jog on and we're not going to do this and play this game with you anymore. And we're not going to tolerate your shit. So therefore, the liberals can walk away in sadness and go, oh, mommy, they won't give us their guns. <laughs> and rightfully so, government, because you didn't buy them, doesn't belong to you, and we need better property rights. Yeah. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and you're see, click like and subscribe and share this content all over around. You guys are awesome. I am very, very grateful that I have the audience, but please consider donating if you can too. All the uh, apps where you can donate to me financially will be in the description, as well as the headlines that I presented to you today will be in the description as well. So you can check it for yourself and come up with your own assessment as we should. Your own assessment is key here too, to think for yourselves, be critical and do what you can to make a difference in this wonderful democracy we call Canada. Anyway, do what you can to help each other in these trying times, ladies and gentlemen. You know, a little bit of extra effort helps. It's getting warmer outside, so plant your garden. 
cut your grass, help your neighbors, maybe cut their grass, no pun. <laughs> but uh, being a little bit charitable on your own dime and time is is uh, encouraged. And uh, just be good to yourselves, your family, your friends, your loved ones. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity merit wins the day. I'll see you probably in the next 10 days or so, but look for my uh, updates on Facebook and YouTube respectively and take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy.